Today's service is the service of the word. There is no communion meditation or participation in the body and blood of Christ offered in this service. Good morning and welcome to worship, this being the second Sunday after Epiphany. A couple of announcements that I would like to share with you. Um, first off, um, I do want to share with you that this next Saturday on the 22nd from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. In our parking lot, there will be um, the pet vaccinations, vaccinations for your dogs and cats, and also chipping for your pets. So um, if you are in need of such services, uh, we encourage you to come uh, between 9 and 11. And then um, just to let you know, between services uh, today, uh, on Sunday the 16th, we will be having a review of our mission spending plan. Uh, this is the financial necessities for Mount Zion to continue to exist here and share in God's ministries with each other and with the community. So if you are interested in um, lear <coughs> excuse me, learning more about that, we encourage you to be a part of that meeting um, if you're able to. Um, and then the following Sunday on the 23rd, following the second service, we will gather as a congregation for our annual congregational meeting. We will be voting on that mission spending plan to accept it. Uh, on the, at that meeting, we will also be electing a few council members, uh, new council members to the, our uh, congregational council. And we will also be electing delegates for our Senate Assembly, which will be up in Phoenix uh, in the Mesa area, June 9, uh, 10 and 11. So um, those things are, are what's going on now. We hope that, uh, pray that uh, you are safe at home. Um, the COVID certainly has been uh, um, manifesting its uh, ugly head. We've had lines of cars here for our, our testing site in the parking lot through Embry. If you are interested in um, or in need of a uh, test, uh, we encourage you to go to the Embry Women's uh, health site and you can make an appointment. Uh, they, they've had to go to appointment only here on our site, uh, no drive up. So uh, that's another thing that uh, you need to know. Other than that, um, today's service is a celebration uh, recognizing the women's ministries uh, in sharing Christ in that, in that unique way. Uh, the, the service is uh, hosted uh, or um, the message is provided by Naomi Garwood. So uh, hopefully you enjoy it and are lifted and uh, just feel the Holy Spirit at work within you. God bless you and take care. Welcome, welcome to Thank Offering Weekend. What's a thank offering? It's a tangible way to show gratitude for God's many blessings. Where does our thank offering go? We give our thank offering to the women of the ELCA National Organizations for ministries both at home and abroad. We think of this weekend as a time to do two things, collect our thank offerings, including Katie's Fund, and it's a time to celebrate women's ministries at Mount Zion. What do our Mount Zion women do? Uh, we have um, a bazaar every December. There's lots of quilters who love to quilt. We also have trunk or treat. We give to the community in this way. You can see um, trying to win a um, stuffed animal. You also see that you can get treats that night as well as see our pastoral staff helping out at Trunk or Treat both as Elijah and as race car driver and a female race car driver. We fundraise with many volunteer hours both at the bazaar and the bake sale every December. Uh, here you can see some of the wreaths that were on sale, the um, raffle to win a beautiful uh, quilt that was donated, lots of baked goods, even putting plants inside a saguaro boot. 
more wreaths, more candy, um, and lots of other things to buy, including a notebook with your internet passwords. A very big job several times a year is helping to price, organize, sell, and clean up after Mount Zion's rummage sale. Uh, you can see from this picture that we advise people to look on the table and under the table. One of the most exciting things that we get to see at welcome meetings is a progress report from the principal at Valencia Middle School. In the next slide, you'll see that they even brought students this last time who gave a performance for us. Uh, with the funds, we buy many things, including this nativity set that we all enjoy during the Advent season. Remember that if you're a woman and if you have a pulse, you are automatically a member of WELCA. There's no membership fee. Men are welcome as well. Every month at our board meeting, we give our purpose statement. As a community of women created in the image of God, called to discipleship in Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit, we commit ourselves to grow in faith, affirm our gifts, support one another in our callings, engage in ministry and action, and promote healing and wholeness in the church the society, and the world. There are so many things that we have um, helped out the church with funds from WELCA. Here are just some of them, and again, the um, nativity was mentioned earlier. To which we say thank you to all bakers, crafters, quilters, buyers, and contributors. Thank you to all who donate to the rummage sales, who get everything ready for the sales, and for all who buy things at the sales. Thanks be to God. We continue as we live our lives in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. O oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you, and your salvation to the upright of heart. Keep us in paths of righteousness, and may we shine forth your glory, O oh Lord. When our words and deeds stir darkness and clouds, may we repent and seek your forgiveness. Let's observe a moment of silence for reflection and self-examination. O oh, merciful God, we confess that we are held captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to us the entire forgiveness of all of our sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I ask that we now join together in praying the prayer for this second Sunday in Epiphany. Together we pray, Lord God, you showed your glory and led many to faith by the works of your Son. As he brought gladness and healing to his people, grant us these same gifts and lead us also to perfect faith in him, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
salvation like a burning torch. The nations sh shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate, but you shall be called my delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. This ends our first lesson. Our gospel lesson for this day comes to us from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter, verses 1 through 11. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and when the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the Gospel of our Lord. I'll 
Cause the Bible tells me to I obey because I love God I obey cause I love my mom and dad I read my and peace to you from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in thy sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Uh, my name is Naomi Garwood. Uh, this slide will show you a little bit about my family since not everybody here at Mount Zion knows who I am. My husband and I live in the summer at a, a campground called Lighthouse Christian Camp in Barker, New York. In the winter, we live in Tucson Estates and we're a part of the Mount Zion family. Uh, the next slide shows a difference in our family since I spoke two years ago. For a long time, we were a family of four, but during the pandemic, we gained our first son-in-law and as you see on the right, we also gained our first grand dog. So we moved from a family of four to a family of five. And if you count dogs, and many people do, we are now a family of six. Uh, two years ago, I spoke um, and I had to be sitting the whole time because I had just had surgery uh, to fix a... Um, a ruptured colon. So uh, I am so grateful that two years later I don't need to be uh, sitting and this verse is very very true. Lamentations 3 22. Because of the Lord's great love we are not consumed for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I'm wondering if you remember the movie called Sister Act. It featured Whoopi Goldberg. She was playing the part of a nun. She gets kidnapped. The other nuns in the convent decide that they can't leave it up to the feds to take care of her. And so they use this line, we can't leave it up to the feds. And I'm gonna paraphrase that line and say that in this church and in any other church, we can't leave it up to the pastors. Um, we, as the body of Christ, are important members and we can help. 
We've already looked at slides earlier today about many of the things that um, the women's organization does here at Mount Zion, but I also can think of so many more. For example, uh, there's a group of powerful women who pray for the people in this church, and then you get a note of encouragement, a postcard that says that you were prayed for. As far as food, there are people in this church who know the Mount Zion kitchen as well as their own. Um, we have community meals starting back up. We have Primavera helping out at the breakfast. We have turkeys at Thanksgiving. We give Christmas gifts to children at Christmas time. Um, there are many people that I would actually like to call out and say thank you publicly, but these are the very same people who enjoy working behind the scenes. But we do say thank you so much. We're going to take a look at John chapter 2, and this is the plan. I will read some verses, make some comments, read some verses, make some comments. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Um, there's different ways to think of the concept third day. Uh, the first slide shows us that it could simply mean this is the third day after what had happened just before. The event that happened just before in the passage is that Jesus called Philip and Nathaniel. The next slide shows that the third day could refer to Tuesday. It's the third day of the he, um, Jewish week, and it's supposed to be a, an especially good day to have a wedding. Because when you read in the creation account, God said, and it was good. And on the, second, on, a, on the third day, he said that twice. So it seems like a really good day. Uh, the next slide shows that the third day is a picture of resurrection glory. Do you remember all the times when Jesus said, and on the third day, I will raise again. So uh, let's look at the next uh, verses. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. Uh, you know, the fact that Jesus was invited to this wedding and uh, chose to attend shows that he's a very social person. He's all about relationships. Isn't it wonderful that we have such a relational God? Uh, this wedding probably involved people in Jesus' um, family. We're going to assume that since his mother was there, he was there, and even the disciples were there. We also want to point out that in the Near Eastern uh, wedding, it could have lasted from three to seven days. That's a long time of feasting. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Apparently Mary was aware that uh, the wine was gone. Um, maybe she was working in the kitchen, had something to do with meal preparation, and she knew this would be a huge embarrassment. Actually it would cause great shame to have run out of the drink of celebration before you're finished celebrating. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. To refer to um, Mary as woman is like saying ma'am, so it's not being disrespectful. And in Aramaic, this idiom literally means, what is that for you and for me? But what it means is, what do we have in common if I do this? For Mary, very little would change, but for Jesus, this would be his first miracle. People would realize he has supernatural powers. Um, my hour has not yet come. This next slide shows um, a quote from Dr. Tony Evans. He says, timing matters to God. We need to live our lives according to his time. His mother said to the servants, do whatever 
he tells you. This is actually my favorite um, sentence in this entire passage. I love it. Mary has known Jesus since he was in utero, actually even before that because she was told he would be born, and she has faith in him. She knows that the best plan is to do whatever Jesus says to do. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. These are very large stone jars and the water would be used later for the ritual cleansing of their hands. If you do the math, there are six jars, there's 20 to 30 gallons, so we're talking about 120 to 180 gallons. I brought a gallon of my distilled water to show this is the gallon that we're thinking of. 120 to 180 of them is quite a lot. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now take some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did what Jesus said to do, and if you remember from the uh, song, they obeyed right away. Um, Jesus blessed their obedience. It makes sense to obey because of who said to do so. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine, after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. Kenny Bowles of Ozark Christian College says that the old water of purification has been changed into wine. The old has given way to new with the coming of the Messiah. Also, look at how um, impressed the banquet coordinator is because this is the good stuff. It's high quality wine. It is so good of Jesus and so like him to answer this request in an Ephesians 3.20 way that is exceedingly abundantly above all they could ask or think. He showed compassion on this bridegroom and the bridegroom's family. Tony Evans points out in this passage that um, the best in life, some of the best in life will happen at the end of life. You know, when I look around Mount Zion, I see that many of us have gray hair, otherwise known as uh, wisdom highlights. So we could truly say that the first half of life has passed. And yet in this passage, we see that some really good um, service to the Lord can happen in the second half of life. Um, what Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. Remember that the writer of this gospel had a very specific purpose, which we read about in John 20, 31. Um, and it is written so that we may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Today we're just able to look at one more passage where we can believe in Jesus because he's capable of miracles, he's the one who provides, he's the one who shows compassion. Our next slide shows us what does this have to do with us. Three points. Number one, God is a relational God. He cares about us. He longs for a closer relationship with you. Point number two, in life, consider that the best is yet to be. May the second half of your life continue to have purpose and peace because of your relationship with your creator and savior. 
And thirdly, remember Mary's words, do whatever he tells you. You can look at other scripture where we're told very clearly what he tells us to do, i.e. love one another, care for one another, encourage one another. Um, may these words be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, and um, blessings to you all. Thank you. Let us now join our hearts, our minds, our souls in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty Lord, we do thank you for the faithfulness and the obedience that we see in Jesus the Christ. He remains obedient to the cross. May we too find strength and life in obedience to your word and to your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious and almighty Lord, we do thank you for the many specialized ministries in our congregations throughout this land and throughout the world. We pray, Almighty Lord, that the women's ministries here at Mount Zion continue to be blessed and allow for them, Almighty Lord, to continue to enrich us in faith and love and hope toward you and toward one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We do thank you, Almighty Lord, <coughs> for all the faithful ministers, all the faithful who follow you as they continue to remain obedient and seek ways of um, being obedient to serve you in your will and in your way. Continue to stir up your Holy Spirit within each of us, Lord, that we may manifest your goodness and your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Lord, there are many here among us who are in need of healing of mind, body, soul, and spirit. We particularly pray for Oscar Lenning, who continues to battle cancer. Please, Almighty Lord, offer him comfort. And also at the same time, Lord, we just pray for miraculous healing. We pray for Lois Howe as well, Almighty Lord. Continue to strengthen her and uh, cause her to be healed throughout her body so that she may be back amongst us um, doing the ministry and, and just having the presence of grace and love among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Lord, we do pray for our congregational meeting as we continue to um, meet and gather here and figure out how best to share in your ministries and your presence with each other and with the community around us. We pray, Almighty Lord, that as uh, this year 2020 unfolds, that we continue to be blessed with um, the money necessary to do ministry, the skills and the, the talents necessary to um, do ministry, and of course, Almighty Lord, keep your spirit very active among us so that we may continue to share your grace and goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We do thank you, Almighty Lord, for the many offerings and uh, the uh, tithes that are being offered here at this congregation so that the ministries may continue. Continue, Almighty Lord, to bless all who contribute of time, talent, and resources. All these things, Almighty Lord, we place in your trusting and caring hands, knowing that you do love, you do care, you do hold us, you never let us go. And for this we give eternal thanks and praise. Amen. May we now join hearts and souls in our minds as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you in favor and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us now go forth in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.